Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. This is a very exciting show. I'm super pumped to be here with you. My name is Anna McNaught, and welcome to Magic in Photoshop. This is the first episode of a four or five part series that we are doing here on Adobe Live, where we are going to be creating some magical things in Photoshop, hence the name, and adding in some fun elements to all of our photos. This may be glow or cool things that you might not expect learning how to use blending modes properly, learning how to paint things from scratch, learning how to add all those special effects that amp up your photos and make people say, wow. So I'm very excited for that. As you can tell, I just wanna give everyone a warm welcome in the chat. Anyone who is watching over on Behance or YouTube, wherever you are tuning in from, thank you for being here with me today. We are gonna have a lot of fun and it is Pride Month. So what better way then to kick it off with some really cool kind of fun poster art um, that we're going to be doing today. As you can see, I got my colors around me and I am all for it. So, um, hey, Cody. Hey, Andreas. Hey, Sam. Thank you all for being here with me. And let's just hop right over to Photoshop. I don't want to waste any time here because we have a lot of cool stuff to do. So this is what we are going to be working on today. And uh, let's see, I need to be on the right screen. All right, so this is the poster that we're going to be working on. And um, a lot of this was created with generative fill. And I kind of wanted to just really spice this up and add some text for pride, love is love, better together. The bravest thing you can be is yourself. And let me show you what this started as. So this started like that, if you can believe it. I just love being able to see the things that we can now do with generative fill um, and also a little bit of compositing and some Photoshop magic. So let's go ahead and get started with this. And just give me one second here. So sorry. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to do is expand on my image and start to prepare this for my scene. Actually, first, what I'm going to do is just get our new canvas ready. So we're going to fully make this from scratch. So let's go new. And then I like to usually do eight by 10 so that we are ready for Instagram because that's where we're all posting, right? Even though the algorithm hates us. And, and then let's just save this as Ride live. Okay, so we are all set up for that. And now we can go over to our stock image. So the first thing we're going to do is just expand on this image. I'm going to zoom out and then expand down so we get a little bit more. We don't need that much. Okay, and now let's, so we're going to use our selection tool here, our marquee tool, and we're going to select this white area. And we just want to get a little, a couple pixels here. You probably have all seen people demo this at this point, but we want to be able to just grab onto a few extra pixels so that generative fill knows what to do. We leave this blank and then we click generate. And we wait and we hang out and we dance and we do whatever we need to do while we wait. Normally, you know, we don't have to do this where we have to show the live part of it waiting to generate, but look at that, amazing. I don't know what the heck we got on our hip here, but ooh, I like the dress, that is fun. Yeah, okay, let's go with the dress. Um, the one thing I have noticed with this is every time I generate something, whether it's the same exact thing, it's completely different, which is a blessing and a curse. It's great because we're always getting new things. It's not going to ever be the same. Um, and so you don't have to worry about it being copied or anything. However, um, you can see I got a different situation going on here in my other one. She ended up with pants. So let's, I'm going to actually make sure that we can see everything here from the beginning as well. 
Um, so you can see we got a different outfit. So we'll see what comes about with this. And um, for those of you in the chat, if there's anything that you want to see, we're going to be adding some outfits. As you can see, we get we have um, let me go up to here. We have our lady in three different outfits and um, we're going to be adding some bright colors. So if you want to tell me what kind of prompts you want to see, uh, we will go with that. Okay, so now that's looking pretty good. And then I do want to just rotate this a little so that we're kind of getting straight lines in the background um, so that our text looks good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Crop in a little and just getting things set up. There we go. Right now, I just want to generate this guy out here. So we are all nice and clean. Try to get some road back in there and we will generate again. So anytime you're getting rid of anything, you do not have to type in a prompt. You just click generate and it's going to pull from the image. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Very nerve wracking doing it live because you never know what you're going to get. Hey, that looks pretty good. We have a little bit of weirdness at the bottom here that added another person. Um, let's see. Okay, maybe we want to select that. So let me just do that again. And we'll make sure we get this part down here. While we wait, just reading the chat. Yes, okay, much better. Yeah, I like that one. That looks pretty good. Um, and we can also go with the one that I made before as well, if we wanna do that, since that worked really good. Um, and then we can also go ahead and generate this area if we want to, as well as getting rid of this guy behind her here. Um, so just kind of cleaning up these areas. Again, it's going to be different every time. Hey, Sean, thank you for being here. Let me know if you have any ideas for this piece. I always love anything that is in your mind. You have a great mind. <laughs> Oh yeah, much better. I really like that. Oh, it wants to add a car. I just feel like adding this kind of creates a better depth or something. I don't know, it really works. Okay, so then um, I am just going to merge visible here so that we can put this into our image and we could go back and let's see, I wanna be on. There we go, she's extra big. So we're just gonna Command T to size that down and get it into place. And we don't even need to add in this much of the dress on the bottom. If we don't want to, that's pretty good. And looking great. Okay, so now, um, what I did in the other one is I added in this rainbow road, which was kind of fun. So we can try that effect too. Um, we'll see what we get. A couple times I've done it now. It didn't work. A couple times it did. So <laughs> um, let's just go ahead and with our lasso, select this area kind of going back in like that. And this area coming back in like that. Make sure we have that edge there. And then this time move this bar around. You can also pin it if you want to, which is great if you don't like being able to move it around, reset it, um, kind of set up your workspace the way you want. So let's do rainbow road and see what it does. Half my time is spent waiting for generations to happen. Okay, see, it wants to do like yellow and white and stuff, but I like that too, that adds some texture and something. Um, we'll generate again. We'll see if we can get it with one more try. 
I don't know why. It's like the first time I did it, it was so cool. The second time it was okay. Now the third time, not a charm. <laughs> Um, oh, that's fun too. I really like that. That doesn't work. Let's go with that one. That's really cool. A little different than what we had here. Um, let me turn this off. And so you can see it did give me like a nice rainbow road here, but then the other generations were like a little bit strange. Okay. So now um, we are going to add in a blue and pink gradient. I'm just, I'm checking over at the chat. Sorry to keep looking over there, but let me know if there's anything you all want to see. Okay. So first I'm going to make a new layer and now in our, um, in our gradient tool, it's editable, which is really wonderful. So we just want basics here and I'm going to turn this to like a pink color. And I'm going to come down from this side. And so now in Photoshop beta, you can change these gradients as you would like, and they are forever editable, which is really amazing because we used to not be able to do that. You may have seen that demoed at max and it's just a major game changer. So now I'm going to make another layer and this time we want to make it a nice blue color. You all know how much I love pink and blue. And I, no, I don't want pink. There we go. So just kind of setting my lighting here. And then we can decide if we want to do overlay. I really like that. I think I did that on the other one. Um, and I think this one I may have done as normal. Let's check. We got overlay and normal. Wow, I remembered, perfect. Okay, and just kind of every time I make something, whether I've made it a million times, I end up continuing to play with the elements in it. So it's always kind of a trial and error because I think no matter how many times I make something, and how close I've done it together, it's different every single time, which I think is kind of cool. You know, every moment it's a little bit different. Um, so now what I want to do is edit her glasses and give them a cool effect. So we are going to, let's see, I'm going to make a new canvas and just make this, let's just do eight by eight. And then we're going to go to gradient. And then I added in a rainbow gradient. So um, I know Photoshop used to have the legacy gradients where they had the rainbow gradient. Um, now you, I believe you have to make your own. At least that's the way I did it. But it's super easy and we can get into that on another episode where we will go over all of kind of the little tricks of making certain things from scratch, including light rays and all sorts of things. So let me know. Feel free to message me on Instagram or let me know in the chat if that's something that is interesting to you and we can talk about it on a future episode. So now we have our rainbow gradient and we can adjust this any way we want to bring in the colors and get it looking good. So this is going inside her glasses. So I just wanna make sure that every color is kind of nicely placed in here. And I really like the way that highlight is. Hey, so that is good. We can go ahead and rasterize that layer, make sure we're all set here. And then we are going to drag it into our canvas. Then just bring it down in size. And there's a bunch of different ways that you could do this, but um, this was kind of what I found best. You also don't have to make your gradient from scratch. You can just get an image of a gradient from Adobe stock or wherever if you want like a certain color and you don't want to have to make it. So I just want to make sure we get all the colors kind of covering her glasses here. And then we are going to go edit, transform, Form, warp, and then bring this into view for glasses. And you could also layer mask this too, if you want. 
Um, I did that as well, but for this one, come on. There we go. For this one, um, just warping it into place worked perfectly. Okay, and then we can, if we want, we can kind of touch up those edges a little bit, or let's just make sure that's on top. I'm gonna name this glasses. This is her left glasses. Naming layers, so proud of myself. And I am just going to double click on that to bring up our blending options. And then we can do a little blend if. So I'm sure many of you have seen this demoed before, but this is a great little trick. If we just drag this down, it gets very like choppy and cut off. But if we hold down Alt or Option, then we get a nice smooth transition. So the reason I'm doing this a little bit is because I think it brings back some of those highlights and her glasses and then we can kind of just play around with that to get our desired look. Maybe a little bit there. And sometimes I do both, sometimes I don't. It's all a matter of what seems to look good. And then um, we are just going to copy this and then go edit, transform, flip horizontal. And we will drag it over there. All right, got some nice rainbow glasses. That looks really cool. Um, in my other one, I, whoa, we are having a big thunderstorm. <laughs> um, in my other one, you can see that uh, I kind of like added a bit more shine in here and played with it. So let's see, um, go back to what I did. And it looks like I just did this part here. Okay. So I toned it down a lot. And it's funny because today I was not feeling like toning it down. But we're going to do that a tiny bit and just go to 70. Perfect. Okay. On the McNaughty bingo card, yes, Anna names a layer. I love it. Oh my God, Sean, that's good. We should actually play like an Adobe Live bingo. That would be really fun. <laughs> okay, so now you could go in and you could layer mask these and, or they do have their layer mask on them so you could clean them up a little, but I think that's fine for the sake of time. And hopefully I will not lose you all with this big thunderstorm. That would be very bad. All right. So next we need to add a little bit of fun hair in here. She needs something um, kind of to give her some cool style. So I am going to, let's see if this works this time. Um, I'm going to just select a little bit of her hair and then come up like this. And I'm just doing this all freehand because I want it to be kind of like loose and fun and playful and not too strict with like a, a um, perfect circle here. That looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna Go generative fill and type in hair. And we wait again. We're sure it's a way to speed this up while we're on live streams. <laughs> Perfect, I love it. Okay, that actually worked really well. Um, those are really cool too. And that, great. Last time I did this, it was not cooperating as well. And yeah, mouse ears. It's essentially like mouse ears, but space buns. I tried typing in space buns and that was really funny. It gave me hamburger buns that looked like a spaceship. So <laughs> you never know what you're going to get with generative fill. Um, I don't know. Which one do you all like? I think I like this first one. Looks like she has kind of a hairband on it. And if you look at how amazing this is, it actually matched the lighting of the gradient that I put in here. So if we turn that off, now you can see it doesn't match the original image, which I think is so cool. Like it matched the lighting of the gradient that I added. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. <laughs> 
Okay, now I'm going to add some pink lipstick. We'll see if this works too. <laughs> Space buns. <laughs> okay. See what we get. No, nope, that's a horrible cutout. Okay, I really hope it doesn't fill in this whole area. Pink lipstick. Sound it out. Spell it out while you're live. <laughs> okay, not horrible. Let's see. Okay, that's a little bit better. Oh, it did get the side of her mouth a little bit. Um, but that one's pretty good. You know, let's let's try it again. I'm just gonna delete that. And you would not believe the number of times I have to go through this and <laughs> delete things and try again. And then, you know, it's all part of the process. And it doesn't have to be perfect here, by the way, either. It doesn't have to be like directly around her lips. That might help, but it also doesn't. Uh, Sean, what do you mean? Would you do this in camera raw instead? Like the coloring or let me know. Okay, yeah, I like that one. That one's pretty cool and very close to the original. Um, her expression looks like a little weird. We could generate again. I'm going to be nitpicky here, but we'll see what we get. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better. Love it. Perfect. Okay. So funny. It's just so great to see the things that the AI comes up with. Um, so I just want to show you all real quick. That's the lips I did before. And this is looking pretty good. I think we're coming along. Okay. So now um, this is where AI gets real funky and fun with me is we're going to give her three different outfits. Um, oh yeah. Yes. I see what you guys are saying. So yeah, if you were going to um, has people mask the lips using AI then change the colors yes so I could certainly just change the color of her lipstick not using AI I wanted to kind of like change her mouth maybe close her mouth um, and so I just want kind of wanted to see what would happen with it and I really liked like how natural it ended up looking too so that was why I did it this way um right so now we're gonna go with a couple different outfits so what we want to do is just try to select her jacket we can go a little outside of it but we don't want to get the hand so we're just gonna go around the hand like this and we can be a little sloppy with it and then we'll go all the way down here i don't know if we want to get that white uh outfit that it gave us ah just keep going, add it on. And yes, okay. Um, and now we'll just get rid of a little bit of skin here and then we'll get rid of this hand. And you could be really careful about this too, if you want like a really good selection. Um, yes. Okay. So first one that I wanted to do was pink raincoat. And the first time I did it, it was um, this really bright, crazy pink raincoat that was like so awesome. And then last time it gave me a black and pink raincoat. So we'll see what happens this time. Okay. Kind of weird, kind of cool. What's everyone think? That one's kind of weird. I don't know. It like made her skinnier, which like smushed her shoulders in. I don't really like that. So we'll just click generate again. And we'll keep going. Hey. Okay. I don't know what the heck is happening. 
I don't know. It gave her like a little teddy bear in her hand or something. <laughs> oh, it's a good time. So that one's pretty cool. Um, let me go back to my original here. And um, we got this sweater, this pink jacket, which I love, I think like so cool. And then this blue outfit. So we're gonna kind of go along the same lines here. See, and we can just keep clicking generate until we find something we like. I'm not fully satisfied with these. Um, for those of you in the chat, let me know what you would like to see for an outfit, if there's anything different um, or which one of these you like. Yeah, getting a little bit more of the outside of the selection will make it do a better job, a little bit of the hand too. Um, hey, I made you a pink, I made you a great pink raincoat. Why do you keep asking? Yes, exactly, I know. It's like, hey, I already gave you this. Yeah, so we could try a new selection too. Um, we could certainly see if doing a better selection helps. Sometimes uh, giving a fresh layer, I don't know, seems to help. Um, there's lots of little things that I've noticed when I try something in a slightly different way, it works better and sometimes it doesn't. So let's just see if we go around the hand here and get a nice good selection. I'm sure you all really love watching me do selections here. I know that's super fun. <laughs> And then let me just get that shoulder down here. And yeah, it's like, it's really interesting to see how it works. We're all still learning, right? Um, get that and then just remove this hand. No, that, okay, perfect. All right. Let's try it again. Pink raincoat. <laughs> yes, um, I'm going to be using the pen tool in two weeks. So that would be super fun. Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to use the pen tool on this jacket, especially when we can be a little bit sloppier with our selections. Okay, this one's really cool. I do like this. I don't like the way it keeps like compressing her body, but um, but pretty good. I don't know what is happening there. I like that one too. That's fun. Um, let me know what you all think. I see Raul said, I like this one, which I think was the previous one that I deleted, the layer. <laughs> And then whatever this gives us, we're just gonna go with it so we can keep moving on. Okay, that one's pretty nice. Cool, cool, cool. That one's fun too. Yeah, the black one is nice, let's see. Yeah. I don't know, what do you guys think? Oh my God, what happened to her hand there? Okay, let's go with the black one. Okay, so that's that's a good one. And then um, we're just gonna actually, yes, we are going to add in another outfit option. Okay, so we're gonna do a rainbow sweater. Click generate. Yes, the pink ladies, I know, forgot about that. Hey, I like that. That's so cool. It's something you would find at a great thrift store. Oh my God. Amazing. Love it. Um, and like, I'm not too worried about how these are looking a little crazy and with the AI artifacts and stuff, because they're going to be put into the background. The main one is our pink raincoat and we can work on that later. So we still have, even though we changed our prompt here, we still have our other variations down here that we can go back to because we need to save these. So let me know which one you like. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards either this, the first one or the third one. I think the third actually has a lot of color so we could do that. And then lastly, let's just go with um, bright blue shirt, question mark. <laughs> 
Just like my shirt. I wonder if we could make the same blue. Just waiting and waiting. Ooh, okay. Dig it. This will definitely work for demonstration purposes. And so we can keep on, keep on moving on. Um, I kind of like that plaid. That's fun. I like that one too. This is so hard. This is what takes me the longest. Hmm. Let me know. What do you guys think? All right, well, while we think about that for our options, let me just extend this. We'll, we still need to decide black raincoat or pink raincoat. I think we might need to go pink and we're gonna go with this third sweater and then either plaid or blue. So I am going to now copy this and I'm going to do the pink sweater. And then I'm going to copy it again and I'm going to do the blue plaid. Okay, so, and now actually I'm just gonna copy these again for safety because I want to uh, fully apply the layer and then I wanna save it so that I can still be non-destructive um, because I wanna just compress this all, um, mask it down. I know it is weird how it keeps making her skinnier. I don't know what's going on. Um, and then we're going to fade it into the background. I'll show you all what I mean in a second. Okay, so we did that one. We need to do that one. And then we're gonna turn that off. And now we're gonna do that one and turn that off. And we're gonna get rid of that layer. We don't need that. Um, and then this is pink. This is rainbow. Naming my layers again, aren't you so proud? A blue shirt. Okay, and rasterize and fly and same. So I'm just doing this to merge everything so that we can do this in our background. Okay, rasterize and apply. So now we have our different outfits and then we just want one main second one. So actually we don't need the pink. Okay, and now, yeah, I forgot we don't like her hand in this one. <laughs> Bingo. Hey George, welcome, hope you're doing well. Um, we're trying to decide what raincoat to put on our model here. And none of these are really, I'm not, I don't know. I now I like this one. I'm just, uh, it's a struggle. Okay. That one's good. Um, so we're going to just duplicate this and then we need everything to, let's see. So I want to just check here. This is, I like, this is where I got caught. It got complicated on myself. So I'm like, what did I do exactly? Okay, so I have my black raincoat, I have my pink sweater, and then we, then I merged everything. Okay. Wait. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening here? Um, there we go. Where did Okay, that's what I want. All right, sorry, just trying to figure it out as I go along. It's, it gets so complicated with all the different outfits. Um, all right, so we have our rainbow outfit here and our blue outfit here. And so now I just want to add this and then um, let's see, we are going to move her over. So we want to why is that not working? 
Sorry, everyone. It's giving me a little issue here. I can't seem to merge it. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of this and we just wanna keep one of these. Okay, so now we have our pink raincoat. There we go. Okay. Okay, and lastly, turn that on. Okay. So now I am going to go into each of these and select our subject. Turn that one off. Make sure. Let's see. Oh. All right. <laughs> we are back on it again. You know, sometimes it's like so funny when you're trying to figure all this out and trying to get it all good. That's pretty good. Just deselecting some of these areas and getting this. Okay. So we are going to copy and paste. Now we're moving and now we don't need this anymore. This is like a really funny way of doing this. And then this, um, don't need that anymore. We don't need that. And now we're going to select our subject here and get rid of this area coming out of our head. How are we doing on time? Okay. Okay. All right. And then copy and paste. Okay. So we can get rid of that. Now we have our main girl and our secondary girls. That is good. Okay. All right. So now we can just kind of play around with the blending mode on these. So I think um, before I did lighten, I really like the way that looks. It's kind of fun. Um, and then we can decide if we want to do the same because you're going to be picking up background details on each one. So you have to decide, do you like screen or lighten or overlay? Um, let's see. I kind of, I think I like lighten on both of these. Um, and then we're just going to layer mask on here and then paint out with black, just paint out over our main subject. So this was just kind of like a fun look that I wanted. You certainly, if you're designing a poster or something, you certainly don't have to do anything like that. Or maybe you have a faster way of doing it. I don't know why that was like kind of complicated for me for some reason. Um, it wasn't that way when I first did it, but uh, we all have those days. So that looks pretty cool. I don't love these outfits as much as the first time I did it. Um, I feel like the outfits on this one came out really, really cool on here. Oh, I guess I ended up doing the outfits afterwards. That's why. Okay. But I love that. That turned out really sweet. This is still pretty fun with the outfits here. Uh, and then just lowering the opacity a little. And we can decide if we want to make them smaller or what. But that is pretty good. Okay. So now we're going to just start adding our text and um, do like hmm, thinking as I'm going along. Okay, so first we're gonna do, we're just gonna type up here and we're gonna make this bigger. And then, so I was kind of going first for the look of that the text was part of the marquee in the background here. Um, but then I decided to kind of change it up and put it at the bottom. So do love is love. And let's select that. And then um, pick our font. I... I think I had something like that. That was really cool. Um, just make it a little bit smaller and let's make it blue. Nice kind of fun glowy blue color. And then we're just gonna double click on here and come into our blending or our layer style. And I want to add a little bit of a drop shadow and then a little bit of a glow. So I like to personally add my drop shadow through um, doing a, or sorry, I like to add my glow through doing a drop shadow because you can control it more and move it around where it's outer glow, you don't have 
as much ability. Sometimes I add both. Um, sometimes I just do drop shadow. So we're just gonna reset this to default first because we do want a little bit of drop shadow here. Just kind of playing with that, getting it however you like, um, totally up to you. Ah, oh, I miss Sean. Bye, Sean, even though you're not here anymore. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna add a little bit of pink glow and let's put that, let's try screen here. Um, and then you can play around with like the distance. And so on this one, it's kind of looking more like a drop shadow, but sometimes if you were to have no distance and then fully increase your size, you can get like that glow look and then you can continue to add onto it. So that's also why I like to use drop shadow for glow, um, where it's outer glow, you can only do one set. So that kind of changes things a little bit. Okay, so I want this to come down. And actually, yeah. And then I just did, um, I just transformed it. So I want to first rasterize that. And then we're going to do transform perspective. And then I just wanted to give it a little zooming back. So you can go either way, whichever way you like. I uh, kind of wanted something kind of like that, very like retro looking um, and bring this up in size. And then we can add in some other sayings. So we could do again, like from the other one, I had better together if I can type and change the font of this. We'll do something else. Let's see. That's kind of fun. Picking fonts always takes me a long time too. I'm always like, hmm, what do I like? What do I want to use? Every day is different. Um, we'll just go with that for now and bring it down in size. And then we're going to kind of blend that in as well. Um, so I think I want to make that like a purple color. I'm not sure about that font. Like, see, it could just go on forever. <laughs> and you can always get more, you know, don't forget you do more from Adobe fonts. And then that's when it's really bad. And I'm like scrolling for hours and hours and days and days and days. So we'll just do something nice and bold. Um, and then, so I kind of had it in the back and then Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Asterize that and go to our transform perspective. Yes. The love is love reminds you of the hippie stuff. I know me too. That's why I loved it. I thought it was just like so fun and reminds me of kind of like old retro posters. And I'll show you all at the end, something like a kind of fun trick uh, to add. And then, so on these, we want to just go to blur and Gaussian blur is usually what I like to use best. And then just kind of like setting it back into that background. Also, this is crazy. We just had a huge thunderstorm and now it's like bright blue, sunny sky. <laughs> okay. And same with this one. We'll just go filter and then use our same Gaussian blur just to kind of give it more of that effect. It's so funny because now with this different pink raincoat, like totally different style than the other one, it's giving like a different vibe. She almost looks like more sophisticated or something. And this one's more like cool streetwear. So digging it. We could have like two very different posters here. Um, and then let's see, we can add in some more text. I want to make sure that is there. And let's see, we have like 10 minutes left. Is that right? 10 minutes left. Um, someone let me know. And then there was a couple more things that I want to do here. 
we'll just leave that with that for the text. You know how to add the text now, and then we can do our final coloring and kind of get everything looking cool. Maybe we'll add a little bit more text. Um, do maybe some something yellow. The best thing you can be is your self. And the orangey yellow. Pick another font for this. And let's go a little bit smaller with that. Um, that is pretty good. It's so funny how different this is becoming. And I love it. All right, so we will also rasterize that. You see the trend here, doing the same thing over and over for certain things. And then we can just decide, kind of like zooming that back a little, and then again, Gaussian blur. And we can kind of put that into the space up here. We could add like a bunch more text in these spaces. Um, in going back, you can see in the generative fill, the first time I did it, we got a lot of big wide spaces, which were really great for text. Whereas here, it kind of like added in duplicate um, windows or lights, whatever that is there. Uh, so each time you do this, each time you generate something, you might end up kind of creating like a new way of adding your elements in. So that's pretty good. Let's do a merge all and we'll just do the final camera raw fill or camera raw coloring on this that I like to do. I made that a smart object so we can edit it and this will just give our final look um, and then we'll be done. Okay, so we can just kind of cool this down a little, start to add in. Um, I kind of want to like bring up the exposure on this, bring up highlights because we're going for that. <laughs> um, we're going for that like postery look. So uh, it's not usually like the landscape type work that I normally do. So we can like just go crazy with this and have fun. Um, bring up the shadows, um, play around with vibrance, whatever we want to do here. And I always really like to use calibration because it's super powerful um, in terms of your coloring. And I like to kind of start there and then go back up into color grading. And uh, any of you that have seen me edit on here on Adobe Live before, I always like to end everything with camera raw because I think it gives this wonderful last step for bringing everything together and giving you a final look. So this is really great. I like. I like that too. I mean, hey, get crazy with it. Why not? Um, and this is definitely bringing out those gradients that we did before too, which is cool. Um, and then all the work we put into making a pink raincoat, now it's an orange raincoat. So <laughs> we can just keep playing with that. And then uh, sometimes I like to do a little bit of color grading. I'm just kind of having fun now with this because it's um, in the last stages here. And then we will go into our masking here. And I like to always do kind of like a radial gradient to focus in the light. And we're gonna invert that and then just bring down our exposure. Yes, love using calibration. Yeah, it's really powerful. It's really, um, it's great for, I use it a lot in my landscape work, any sort of like more serious artwork because I can just really lightly tweak it without getting into a full color grade. Yeah, purple on color grading, I always do purple highlights and green shadows. That's a good idea. Let's try it. purple highlights and green shadows. Yeah, I think there's probably too much color going on in this one, but that's such a good idea. I like that. That's really cool. 
even just something like maybe we now you can tell i'm just like totally having fun with this playing around seeing what happens um i always like to play with temperature too and go to the full extreme because you never know what you're going to end up with um this ends up giving me kind of like movie poster vibes this gives me more of like a retro shopping mall or something uh that's really cool too um and then i don't know i kind of like that too Yeah. So you can just play with that. Keep going until you are fully happy with what you create. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to brighten this up a little bit in this area. Um, this totally looks like a 90s movie poster or something. <laughs> it ended up becoming, I don't know, It's I'm trying to think of like, um what movie yeah hey okay. all right so that is pretty good and you can see the power of camera raw as always like we went from this before kind of playing with our colors to this and it's looking like super funky i love it um and i i think that's just a really great way to do your final color grading um we can also then double click on camera raw and come back in here because we made it a smart object so it's always editable even though it's um you've now merged all of your layers together you can at least keep your coloring editable so that's a really good way to work um, and then lastly, something that I wanted to show you, we'll see if it works on this one. It worked on the other one. It was kind of fun is coming in and doing like a crazy curves in here to create something a little bit different. Um, if any of you follow Magdiel Lopez, uh, he does this all the time with his work, or at least he used to in some of his older work to create an iridescent look. And this was like a really great way to create something a little bit different. So um, for me personally, I like wouldn't do this within my own work, but if I was creating a poster, this is a cool way to kind of give it like a holographic look. And it's a unique way to use curves too. So you can just kind of play with that to your liking. And then we can do a blending mode on it. So we could just do screen to like really lighten it up, overlay, we could go hard light, which is gonna be kind of, I guess the same as normal on this one, like so many different options. I mean, even that just the saturation is kind of cool. It's a fun way to get some super different effects that you, in a way that you wouldn't normally use the tool in Photoshop. I like to kind of do things like that. And that's one of the things that all of the, excuse me, all of the magic in Photoshop is going to be maybe using some tools in a way that we may not have traditionally learned to use them or the not proper way of using tools and doing it to create art because it's different and fun. So if you like that idea, then you can come watch my show for the rest of uh, June and July. But on this one, I don't know, I'm really digging this hue. Like I am must be in a weird mood today. I like, I like these colors, it's really fun. Um, and then we can also just put a layer mask on to the curves and we can adjust that too. So we can come in with a black brush and I like to always have a low flow on here. Yes, definitely follow Magdiel Lopez. He's amazing, amazing person, amazing artist. Um, fading into the background, yes. So we could then just like fade, or sorry, layer mask out some of these areas if we just wanted to keep some of the retroness just in one area or kind of play with that look of incorporating that in. So maybe, we keep their faces kind of with that crazy retro look, but clean up the jacket. So this is how I just like paint in Photoshop. And I think I'm just using a mouse, but if you have a tablet, you can also really get in and like actually fine tune things and paint it and just a different way of doing stuff. 
So that's looking really cool, really different from this one. This was the one I made the other night and this was the one I made today. So I am like, I'm loving this top area. This is so cool. Um, just like a very unique look. So that's about it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I know we had a lot of downtime in between generating the different outfits and everything, but I hope you learned something today and I hope you all enjoyed this class. If you did, please join me for my future classes magic in photoshop again where we are going to be doing lots of fun things in photoshop where you can add in glow and different elements to your images to really give them that wow factor so thank you so much everyone for watching it was a pleasure being here with you today and i will see you next time bye